Uh, welcome, Mr. Kaplan. Nice to be here. I'm excited to listen to you and Gary talk about super tips. Oh, super oh, tips. I I'll tell you, ratings are yeah. going to be flying <laughs> up the wall. Uh, this is one of the craziest public policy decisions we are in year 27 in debating uh, uh, the Pawtucket uh, uh, Red Sox. Uh, baseball is now facing its lowest, Major League Baseball is facing its lowest attendance in 15 years. There was 974 uh, at a game between the Chicago White Sox and Tampa Bay at Chicago's brand new stadium. So much for those brand new stadiums at one game this year. Uh, you, you, before we get into innovation, uh, Muckle, uh, what's your thought on, you're a big, <laughs> You're one of those, one of those guys who are in social like, media. They're all like, guys. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to discuss age grouping, but they're generally yeah, yeah. mature individuals. Yeah. Uh, they actually don't go to the Paw Sox games. Did you just but they, call me old? I, I did not. I said, yeah. these are experienced individuals. Charlie yeah. Bax, yourself, Billy Reynolds, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott McKay. Uh, none of you have actually ever bought a ticket to a Paw Sox game, yeah. but you're all huge advocates of spending uh, $40 million on this thing. Again, with the spending. Uh, like, first of all, the, the deal that was on the table before we started talking about a super tip where the state enhanced the credit. First of all, it's not spending anything. We're so, we yeah, think right. everything's 38 studios. It's enhancing the credit so that they can sell the bonds can I ask at you a, a question? reasonable rate. Can and I you ask you? These, the guys who own the Paw Sox are some of the smartest, right. richest people, not yep. just in Rhode Island or yep. New England, in America. Yep. Why won't they take a personal guarantee on this project okay. if they love so it so now much? You take the equity. It's a great deal. Take it's just a great deal. So All of us want to sign up for it. So easy to spin this, right? <laughs> that you take the equity that's in this deal. Equity that's coming from folks that have a we do an IPO? connection. Now show me every triple A deal. By the way, they that's don't been even done in the history of triple A, <laughs> and you show me one that has as much equity on the table. So other suckers <laughs> who have bought these things, <laughs> right. we, that's who we should. By the way, only one of these individuals still lives in Rhode Island because of the oppressive taxes. That yeah. is true. Yeah. Correct. So. Yes. No, well, I don't know the facts of uh, that, but uh, that, that, I think that we could go along with that fact uh, that, that, pattern. That wouldn't surprise Tom me. Tom Ryan, that Florida. That wouldn't surprise me. Terry Murray, that Florida. Here's the thing. Listen, <laughs> this this is all post thirty eight studios. Is there any deal that you would like to support? This? Oh, I there think there's any a lot. Role, is sure. There any role no, no. I think there's a great. We've written about it yeah. from an editorial yeah. standpoint. They build the stadium. We give them the roads and the land. They get about twenty five million dollars from the state of Rhode Island as uh, that's kind of the deal in New England. That's what Bob Kraft got. Yep. That's what the Jacobs brothers got in Boston. Fair game. And we're off into well, the races. That would be, so wait, the deal you just talked about. Is about 20, 25 million dollars. Cost the state a whole lot more than the deal that's on the table right now. I, I tend really, to the, agree. Anytime the super can, tip? I, I like, no, the deal that's on the table now, first of all, that's a bad deal. Go back to the, just enhancing the credit, right, which doesn't require anything out of the general budget, right? Yes, there's a risk of default on the back end, but this is a revenue Except for you're using Pawtucket, revenue, but you're using right? Pawtucket as the conduit, not a good financing structure. Yeah, I don't Has like it the, been I, I don't like on the, the pre-deal, on the Senate deal as well. Anyway. Um, uh, anyway let's jump over to innovation. Uh, yeah. Keep going on the baseball stadium, right? By the way, if you're going to build a stadium, it should be for the New England Revolution. Let's get a major league team oh, in here in a fast-growing sport. Like. Uh, uh, I do like that. Bob Kraft has said straight out every place he's gone that he will pay for the construction of the stadium. He's already behind in the deadline of meeting MLS soccer's demands of all their owners to have soccer-only stadiums. He's got to find a place. Kate Nagel caught up with his son, and he said by the end of the year, they'll have a location. Let's put it in Providence, Rhode Island, well, and get on with it. Well, if you really want to go 21st century, put an e-gaming studio up. Yeah, we probably should. Right. 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 By the way, it won't be long before right. Twin River has an e-gaming studio, yeah, and right. we'll be sports betting on it. Yeah, that's probably um, right. Uh, probably let's right. jump over to uh, Mary Meeker, the sort of uh, yep. uh, leading, is she the leading, one of the leading internet prognosticator yep. and finance experts, um, comes out every, the end of May, beginning yep. of June, with her analysis of where the internet is <coughs> and where it's going. And uh, she came out with, I don't know, a 400-page slideshow <laughs> that breaks down pretty much every data point going on. And it is, it is 
tremendously rich in information. Yeah. And if you're <laughs> and if, if you're in an old school model business in, somewhere in the world of uh, technology or media, uh, it is a scary uh, slideshow. Yeah, well, I mean, she, every year uh, uh, a lot of folks, uh, including me, looks forward to this, right? Uh, so there's a lot of hoopla around this report. And uh, Mary talks about, you know, some of the big trends uh, that have been going on. Not, they're not new, but she kind of updates us on them. Uh, and so we can kind of see where the Internet's heading, you know. And so there was a lot to, to digest in that report. You know, I, I, I hadn't really thought through, do you know, half of the world has access to the internet right. now, you know, which is incredible, right? The, the second half is going to be harder to get. Harder, yeah. It's in, harder to get places, but there's an amazing number of people that are now connected you know, to the internet. Of course, the big trend that continues to go on is the continued trend towards mobile, yeah. right? You know, that hasn't slowed down, right? That we've gotten off of these desktops and you know, we've gone to mobile form factors and we're carrying our cell phone around that has more, com more processing power and access to more through the cloud you know, than uh, we've ever had before. So of course, all of the applications that sit on top of that, all of the e-commerce things that we talk about uh, every week. Um, but there's some new things in there. They ta uh, she talked a, a lot uh, about, uh, about speech uh, and the ability to, to have an interface where I can just talk. Uh, and the uh, computer will recognize me, and we've talked about this. The, you have an Alexa at home. Right. It's gotten better and better and better. It's still not there for a lot of applications, but it's going to be. Pretty right. soon, we're not going to need a keyboard, right? right? And we're, everything is going to be speech recognition you know, back and forth, and that trend is going through the roof right now. And I think you'll see a lot of people paying attention. You touched on a lot of points. Yeah. I want to go almost to the first one you talked okay, about, that there's this division, right? There's half the world is now connected, yep. half the world is not. Is this uh, going to further enhance the separation of wealth, or is this going to be a huge opportunity as if the second half of the population becomes internet accessible, that they can increase their wealth? Will, you know, well, what's your thought well, on... The separation of wealth is happening in both parts mm -hmm. of the world, but you can take each one. The uh, part of the world, including some parts of the United States, yeah. right, where we still don't have good uh, access, good, you know... Any, Tremendous right? parts of the country, yeah. rural areas, don't have... Right. We have significant better, connectivity. We, we still have to do better, and there's a lot of efforts underway to make sure that we're putting the infrastructure. These are the roads of the 21st century, yep. and we have to make sure everybody has access to on-ramps. But in a deregulated right. uh, Republican Trump era, pushing through a requirement to, of companies to build 5G in Aroostook yeah. County, Maine, right. is not a likely yeah. scenario. But the cost keeps keeps going down to do it right? yeah. with these newer technologies, where you can transmit the signal further. Right, you don't need as many towers, you know, to put these the, this kind of capacity in, uh, and you can cover big, broad areas. And there's some other technologies that allow you to do it as well. So yes, we have to keep working on it. Yeah. It will not be as easy to get the second half as it was to get the first half. But even within the half of the world, you know, half of the world's population that has access and is, is connected, there's still, do we have to be able to, to use it for good and make sure that everybody has access? Well, there's a lot of been, and recently a lot of people have been talking about, you know, creating private highways and speeds, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to keep net neutrality is the thing everyone talks about here. We got to make sure that we keep the roads accessible uh, to everybody and that we don't discriminate between people who are willing to pay more and so that everybody has equal access. It's the great democratizer of if we can all get at this internet and we can exchange value and ideas, we can get at education and learning, we can open, we can become more entrepreneurial and start businesses, accessing capabilities that before only large organizations could access. This is really good for the global economy. We have to, we have to make sure that we're not putting barriers in front of creating access to this and all these capabilities. One of the most amazing slides is there's a, a breakdown of the users per different applications and websites and 
probably the most uh, amazing one is Facebook at 2.2 billion registered users. And if you if you're you know uh, there's there's not much fraud. This is not this is not Twitter. There's not a lot of fraud on Facebook. If you want to say there's 10 percent fake accounts, I think that would be a, a high number. But e even using that, just say it's two billion. It's right. it's a third of the world's population is now yeah, on Facebook. Um, is that is that good news or is that well, an antitrust issue just waiting for uh, a good uh, uh, justice department? Well, uh, the natives are restless. Um, you know, there's a uh, there's a lot of folks. But we'll talk about both. We'll talk about antitrust. Are they too big and anti-competitive? You know, and then we'll talk about privacy and security of the information. You know, both of these are timely. A lot of the, uh, the some of the uh, antitrust uh, drumbeat. You know, you can hear it in the background. Um, you start to hear some people come out in the foreground and talk about maybe the Justice Department has to take a look. Sure. You know, at how big uh, Facebook is. It's still very early days. It's not not like they're ready to take an action, right? But there's a lot of public pressure. Now there's a lot of politicians that are starting uh, to talk about it. I saw uh, Keith Ellison, a senior guy on the, in the Demo on the Democrat side, yep. uh, came out and literally asked the FTC to take a look. Yep. Uh, at, uh, he was yeah, the uh, yeah. ch uh, candidate for chairman of the Democratic Party and yeah. lost to Paris. Yeah, and um, a lot of this comes is at Google more than it's at yeah. Facebook, but uh, but you see it with Facebook too. But a lot of pe folks uh, are are upset that because these folks are so big, they can control who has access. So on Google, you know, of course, all the local retailers and Yelp and all these other folks, you know, are all all worried that Facebook uh, that Google is manipulating how you get stacked in these search results. Well, of course they are. Right. Um, so so you hear some 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 talk about anti. Trust. I think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. I think they better be careful, or they'll find themselves, you know, defending it like Microsoft did. Yeah. You know, way back when it distracted Microsoft in an incredible way. The senior leadership resources. They had to fight that thing for a lot of years. Ten years. Uh, and it took their eye off of. You know, we could actually look at it and say, you know, maybe they would have been positioned for search, right? If they had their eye on the ball instead of trying to fight back uh, antitrust legislation. Let's go back to Mary uh, Meeker's uh, presentation. We'll have it up tomorrow as well as some key yep. slides that we pulled out in this article. But let, let's talk about some of the others. Obviously mobile is absolutely yep. king. Uh, you know, time spent with uh, uh, print is down to 4% of, of users' time. Right. Time spent digitally is now uh, at about 50% uh, of all media usage. Uh, average person is you know, there's, there's another study that's out that functionally almost all waking hours people are digitally uh, engaged. I mean, it's just, it's a remarkable transformation that's in such a remarkably short only period of time. time of the day that I'm not checking it. Like, that stuff stays downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like, but some people don't. They have it right there on the bedside. Like, and they're getting <laughs> notifications and dings and all the stuff is happening all night. Like, crazy. No wonder nobody sleeps in <laughs> <laughs> um, Some of the other things that I think uh, was one, one element, though, you did see a slowing of the uh, adoption of smartphones. It sort of peaked. Yeah. The average penet uh, increase in penetration, it's still obviously growing, but that, that growth yeah. rate has it's growing as fast. As fast. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. down to well, around. Well, this gets to the, this, I mean, everybody. Are we uh, only going to get to half of the population? I mean, is that ultimately? Well, it goes back to uh, do we get the bandwidth you know, and the access you know, to spread uh, to populations that can't get at it today? Uh, and then you'll see the smartphone use you know, pick up. Uh, but it grew like crazy for a lot of years. And yeah, it's slowed down, but it's still increasing. I don't think you're going to see that flatten off or decline. We, you know, we're still hitting mobile. You know, I, I, there's also some data in that report about uh, commerce and advertising. Yeah. Right. And so, w if you look at the global uh, advertising business, you would think that a greater percentage of the advertising would now be on mobile, and it still lags. Far so behind. So there's a yeah. lot of upside yeah. to digital advertising, which which I suppose is great if you're if you're one of the leaders, right? But for the rest.
rest of us you know, that worry about a surveillance economy where they keep ratcheting up the ability to share more and more precise information about you and I, and then they sell it you right. know, to advertisers, that becomes worrisome, and it goes back to where a lot of the backlash is happening. You saw Europe take a big move you know, to try to put some regulatory frameworks in place around how this data is actually going to be used. So a lot of this has to do with, yeah, everything's going mobile, where a big chunk of the world has access to the internet. A lot of commerce is moving there. I saw uh, that there are more searches on Amazon for product than there are on Google. Yeah, absolutely. That's a pretty amazing. Yeah, idea. yeah like I, I hadn't really. And seen Facebook that. was up there that, as well. That is and that's really not even a commerce amazing. site. So now you know what's at stake here. But this whole notion of it's all about advertising is that it's the only way to monetize it worries a lot of people, worries me, right? Because, you know, wh why wouldn't we allow business models to emerge that were not about uh, just selling ads, you know, and actually delivering value and we subscribe and we pay for access to the tools that make our life better, right? As opposed to we get them for free. But then it isn't so free, right? If, it's, if, you know, if, if you got something for free, then you are the product. Is yeah, the, you know, absolutely. Is the, is the quote uh, it the is interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, uh, Facebook, especially, is grabbing a bigger and bigger share. Google is grabbing a bigger, bigger share. So that the growth in digital advertising is being consumed by the major players. By a few. To the, yeah, to the right. detriment of smaller players. No, you know, that's right. Because uh, you, you can't get in, and if you, if you have to depend on advertising, you know, and you're trying to break in, they command almost all of it. Yeah. Like, and that's where a lot of the antitrust you know, conversations come up uh, as well. Um, anything else that stuck out uh, in that uh, I think it's, I don't know, 300 pages. It's a, huge, it's a huge report, so I didn't read the whole thing, but I did see uh, some of the conversation there. No, I mean, most of the things in there, because I've been watching this a long time, you know, it's not, we didn't just wake up today and have these things happen. You know, they've been happening for some time, but I think it's important to pay attention and to pay attention to the trends, right? You know, like when we say, you know, mobile is hot, we're not just talking about, you know, some trend to think about. I mean, everything is mobile mobile. And then it's not just the form factor that we have, the cell phone, everywhere you go into your car, you know, wherever you're going to go, it's going to be connected, it's going to be smarter, and the better we get at AI, the more all that processing is going to happen up in the cloud, and you're going to have just-in-time information, right? Now the question is, you know, how do we pay for it, mm -hmm. right? Is it an advertising model, or can we actually create more business models where there's value created because they helped you live your life better, get at better information? So we'll see. We'll see. No, I didn't see anything in there that was like, oh my God, I missed that. Or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, you know, I right. Didn't, I, I didn't see that. <laughs> but every time I read it, I'm like, this thing is so amazing, these trends, that they're obvious. And so anybody who hasn't built them in, now we've had conversations about organizations you know, that are waiting to see. Like, are you kidding me? Right. Wait, waiting to see? Well, I, you know, I, I just think, you know, listen, one takeaway I think that everybody really has to focus on is uh, you've got to be mobile first. I mean, you literally, right. if you're posting a job, it's got to be mobile right. first. If you are putting out an application for your night school, college, at Providence College, it better be a, a, uh, you better be it's able to apply and fi fill out the form. It's like you create a website, you know, and if you're old school, you create a website and you look at it on the laptop <laughs> or the desktop, you're, oh, that looks beautiful. Right. And then you go render it, you know, on a cell phone right. and it looks awful. Yeah. Like, why didn't we design it, right. you know, with mobile, not only in mind, but mobile first. Absolutely. You know, and then come back and say, how does it render on the bigger screen, right? So we have to flip our mindset, we have to shift our lens because it's a mobile world and anything you're going to do digitally has to play there. Um, let's talk about some of the other things uh, we're seeing. We, you start to go and talk about federal uh, regulatory look at Facebook. Obviously Zuckerberg yep. was over at the EU. Yep. You saw a very, very aggressive uh, yep. council 
bombarding, very informed, almost experts, almost his equal in the type of dialogue that took place over in the European Union. It was a, uh, a vast juxtaposition versus what happened in Congress when, uh, not to be insulting, doddering fools uh, tried to uh, voice staff yeah. questions and as soon as they were done with their questions they were lost, had no idea how yeah. the internet worked, yeah. had no idea how social media worked. Uh, yeah. it, 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 did that expose a real failure of, fe of the federal government in the United States that there's functionally no viable yeah. oversight in looking at well, these things? The, as usual, you know, the regulations you know, are, the, and the regulators are slow to keep up with these trends. But well, slow to, know, slow but, to keep up yeah. might be uh, the no, last six months I algorithm was, uh, change. It scared me. So let's, we'll take the U.S. first and then we'll go over to Europe. You know, so basically what Zuckerberg had agreed to do you know, with Facebook is he agreed, given if, as long as they agreed that this is how it was going to go, right? So he literally got to do, tell the story the way he wanted to tell it. You know, then he responded to very short questioning from right. a lot of folks in Congress, right? And most of his answers were, we'll get back to you, right? right? So he, they got away with, with it there. When they did that same thing in Europe at the European uh, Parliament, yeah. the commission there, same thing. They agreed to the same set of rules, but they were having none of it. <laughs> yeah. They wanted an interactive discussion, not 20-second sound bites. They did not want, we'll get back to you, and they were frustrated. Yeah. Right? And they were frustrated, and you could see it if you watched a, a little bit of, uh, of that hearing. The, in America, as I listened to our leaders, uh, they, even the questions they asked were naive. Mm -hmm. They just didn't command an understanding of where these technologies have gone, and they did, were not credible. They must not have been well staffed, you know, for that, and they just haven't spent enough time focused on. You know, it's so issues, funny right? because all congressional, most congressional campaigns are driven now off social media. They have the best consultants. They're right. spending millions of dollars. They're pushing the edge. Right. right, Republicans right. and Democrats, they're you know they're this right. close to breaking the rules, and simultaneously, from a staffing standpoint, or did they just want to throw the softball up and and no, get I, out of I get out of dodge? Of, I think they have a lot of work to do, and I think we have to be more attentive to electing people who actually understand these issues, yeah. right? So it's not just give me a staff report so I can read. But yeah, is part right. of it to also capture, it, Google has more lobbyists than any other company in the United no, States. That's right. Um, you know, the, 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 they're not underrepresented. They're, they're pounding uh, K Street well, just like. Up, uh, well, they woke up too. I mean, they, they kind of had a free pass, uh, right. the, the tech industry. Right. right. Now, but when it starts affecting real constituents and and businesses are closing as they get disrupted, and it's affecting local communities. Now it becomes more of a political issue, and so now all of a sudden they have ramped up, and they have the resources to ramp. And up. listen, one and, of the yep. uh, most powerful tech entrepreneur owns the yep. first or second most influential newspaper in the United States simultaneously, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, and you can say. Yeah. It's very. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think. I, I mean, everyone likes to point to that. I think what they have to do, and all of these big tech companies have to do, is they have to pay serious attention, or they're going to find themselves in an antitrust, you know, a very heavily regulated, you know, with folks trying to, to, to do the regulation that don't understand it. Yeah. Right? So they better get out in front of that. And now they, they are. They're putting real resources, hiring real talent. Yeah. You know, these are huge groups, right? And so. I think you're going to see this go on now. I think over the next five, ten years, you're going to see uh, government get much more involved. But you're going to see the companies also be involved in terms of lobbying. And make but as citizens, while we're watching that movie, right. we have a real role to play. Right, we have to be more thoughtful about where we put our information. We have to be. We have to understand what happens to that information. The stuff that came out this week, even more stuff uh, on Facebook, you know, oh, in yeah. terms of how open they were in terms of allowing developers and partners to get at the, the data, not just the data, my data. But if you if you and I are friends, oh absolutely, your data. And then oh no, one hundred percent. I mean, we've like we've we've worked with some of those companies yeah. as back as three or four years ago. Right. The token, 
the data token that every Facebook user right. has, has 30, 32,000 pieces of data. Yes, right. they know that I like Dunkin' Donuts, but they also know which of my friends like Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. And, and they're able to... Who had absolutely. no ability to stop access to their information. 100%. Right. And so this is going to change. This is what the GDPR stuff, the European uh, yeah. regulation, is attempting to do. It's going to take a while to work its way out. But f we now have to pay attention to what privacy we want, what what permissions are we willing to give to. Can I ask you a question? Right. Is it just too late, though? Let, let me ask you. Yeah. You know, it, I'm, I would love to have no guns in America, no handguns in America, but there's 300 million handguns. Yeah. So you kind of question how effective could we be in regulation? Everyone's data is out there. Not only is their data out there, they checked a little box when they signed up for all these different things, not reading it, not understanding it. They did it with Google, they did it with Facebook, they did it with Twitter. Yeah. Is the is maybe it won't be updated to the same level, but is your data so far out there that you've really almost got to rethink the ability to have privacy around that data? Well, listen, we can go back and second guess history and say, oh, wouldn't it have been nice if we had built it this way? Yeah. Right. But you can't go back. You can go forward. Well, and, and so, also, but so, also, you and can, that's true. Uh, but also, to, you know, yeah. Facebook wouldn't have a business model if right. they didn't have data. Right. Right. I mean, they sell an ad. We buy ads. You've bought ads because you can micro-target innovators in New York City right. Right. and invite right. them to come to Biff. If you couldn't invite innovators right. in New York City, well. I could buy a, you know, drop direct mail down to New York City and have the same opportunity. It's that. But your 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 base question was, is it too late? And yeah. My answer to that is no. You started. You you made the analogy of, you know, gun control. It is not too late. We can create regulations. We can start to limit. You know, access to guns. No, you know, people who already own them. But yeah, we can do a lot. So I don't buy this. It's too late. It's definitely not too late for guns. It's not too late for privacy and information. We just have to pay more attention. We have to experiment with different frameworks. Does the user have a? Fa is it a fair battle? You get those, you know, credit card inserts of all the rules of your yeah. credit card. It's right. 17 pages and .3 font. The, the same type of thing is on those legal agreements to update your license on Microsoft or download some, an app on Apple. Is it a fair fight between the user, the consumer, and the tech company, the, the finance company? Well, I think that this equation, this math is changing because it used to be, and I mean, you could argue that even today it's still the big you know, conglomerates, the big players. But let me tell you, when the crowd decide, when they learn something and they yeah. decide something, so it's not individual users, So that, that a compa this crowd could spawn a competitor. Figuring out how they organize and put pressure back. On let me tell you the great post I saw last night. <laughs> a dear friend, uh, uh, an artist, West Coast artist, somewhat famous, Rhode Island Roots, says, I'm done with Facebook. I'm going to Instagram. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Owned by Facebook. Yeah, yeah there uh, we go. Last thing. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's Biff Summit time. Uh, we're cutting down. We're probably under a hundred days. We're under a hundred days, right? Yes. Under hundred days. Yeah, there we go. So uh, we've got the calendar. We check it off. We race in every morning. Who's going to cross <laughs> out a day till Biff Summit? Yeah. Uh, give us a little uh, exciting yeah. preview. Something you have not told anyone else. Well, we literally just uh, we literally just added uh, to the uh, agenda. Uh, Andrew Hessel, who's a friend of ours, is this incredible brainiac uh, guru on synthetic bio. Technology. Like we always talk about information right. you know, and on everything, but the one that really worries me is the information of our genetic code, right, that you now can, you, you can manipulate, you can edit, uh, and this guy, Andrew Hessel, you know, is actually uh, an expert in what does it take to write DNA, not just read it, to write it, right, and so now think about the ethical issues that are involved with an what army when of you can Saul do that. Kaplan's right. innovating yeah, well, across Rhode Island. Well, you would avoid that at all costs for sure, but so he's going to come to the summit uh, September 13th uh, and 14th. Uh, he 
always he scares us you know with what's possible uh, but then he also helps us think through what do we need to be thinking about how do we as a society take advantage of these new technologies uh, and make sure that we don't wake up and have you say is it too late right is you it know, too late right. do we have nine paw sock stadiums <laughs> right. and tons right. of debt and no one uh, in any just, of them you just can't get over it you can't get over it um, uh, as always it's uh, uh, it's just a few months away, rated as one of the best uh, business innovation meetings in uh, the United States, and it really is a, just a remarkable experience. Uh, we look forward to it, and uh, thank you as always for coming always on good. Business Money. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have Kate Nagel on, and uh, it'll be another rock and roll week. Stay tuned. Lots of things breaking. There's more news going on than uh, can uh, choke the internet, I think, uh, in Rhode Island in the last 24 hours. Uh, thank our friends over at Deepwater Wind. Congratulations on their big announcement last week. And of course, thanks uh, the folks at Navigant. Um, we're signing off in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. We'll see you tomorrow on Go Local. We'll see you tomorrow on Go Local. We'll see you tomorrow on Go Local. We'll see you tomorrow on Go Local.